Biomechanics principle number two. One must understand the confu confusing terminology regarding the subtilo joint in regard to position and motion. One must understand subtilar joint positions and motions in a manner that supersedes the confusing and inconsistent terminology in the literature. It's important to do so because the subtilar joint complex is unlike any other joint in the body. It's not a ball and socket joint like the hip or the shoulder, and it's not a simple hinge joint in an orthogonal plane such as the knee, elbow, or the interphalangeal joints. It has an axis of rotation. Uh, it's an odd axis, and it's not in the transverse, frontal, or sagittal planes. In fact, it's 23 degrees internally rotated and 41 degrees dorsiflexed, though there's a, a range. I find it insignificant and unimportant to memorize this axis, but just to understand how it works. And hopefully this next set of slides will help you understand. We would all agree that the hind foot of that photograph is inverse. The distal bony part is angled inward toward the midline compared with the more proximal part. That's what varus is, like genuvarus, cubitus varus, hallux varus. The subtalar joint assumes a static varus position by inversion. So inversion is a motion. It's a plantar flexion down and an internal rotation in of the subtalar joint, the joint under the talus, which some only consider the calcaneus, but it's actually the calcaneus, the spring ligament, the navicular, the so-called acetabulum pedis, that goes down and in, plantar flexes, and internally rotates under the talus in the motion of inversion that results in the static position of varus. Supination has been applied to that motion, but it's much too simple and doesn't appreciate all that's going on. I think supination is a great term for the form, but not for the subtalar joint. We would all agree that the hind foot in that photograph is in valgus alignment. The distal bony part is angled outward away from the midline compared with the more proximal bony part. The subtalar joint assumes a static valgus position by the motion of eversion, and eversion is a combination of dorsiflexion up and external rotation out, up and out of the subtalar joint, of the calcaneus under the talus, of the acetabulum pedis under the talus to assume the static valgus position. Pronation, again, much too simple a term to describe what's going on. Pronation, like supination, are very good terms for the form, but not for the subtalar joint. So to reiterate, to assume a static varus position of the subtalar joint slash hind foot, the subtalar joint inverts by plantar flexing and internally rotating down and in, and the subtalar joint assumes a static valgus position, the position we see in flat foot, skew foot, by everting, which is a combination of dorsiflexion and external rotation, up and out. So I've said it multiple times here, but I'll point it out just one more time. The subtalar joint, dorsiflexes and plantar flexes. We know that the ankle joint dorsiflexes and plantar flexes, and plantar flexes but so does the subtalar joint. And that's why it's so important when evaluating hind foot deformities in children, and perhaps also in adults, to isolate where the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion are occurring, at the ankle joint, at the subtalar joint, or both.